if you buy a tune track product and if you buy this ECX, you get good sound right out of the box. This company goes the extra distance. We're here because we want to capture the sound of Americana music and the sound of the city. It's a genre that we haven't exactly covered yet. I've been listening to what you'd call Americana music for most of my life. And I didn't realize a lot of that music is made around Texas. So we looked up Austin and we found Mark. He wanted to do an Americana kit. And I said, well, that's interesting you came here because that's what we do. A lot of Americana music, a lot of Americana artists play small venues. They prefer it because they want to be closer to the people. So I think the Americana kit requires a smaller room, a smaller space around the drums. Just a particular sound that's supporting the singer-songwriter. It is a big responsibility. We are trying to represent Americana drums or Austin drums. I'm approaching it like I'm recording a band, except that the music part is up to someone else. It's different everywhere you go. And for this particular project, the guys here in Austin, they had what we're looking for. We're capturing this studio so people can have the Mark Hallman sound in their own home or in their own studio. They came to the Congress House, I think, because uh, that's a lot of the music we do down here in Austin. Blues, folk, old style country, that all requires a kit that's set on a smaller stage. We have done quite a lot of recordings with big sounding rooms and we wanted to do a a smaller one. Our room is not tiny, but it's not huge in terms of recording studios in general, but that that's on purpose. It's because we wanted something that's like in a living room. You wouldn't believe the difference between two rooms. Some rooms you can't play too hard in, some rooms you have to play a little bit harder in just to get good articulation. The thing about this room is you pretty much can do whatever you want because it's tuned really well. It has just enough resonance. It's somewhat dry, but not too dry. There's definitely a sonic imprint, but it doesn't sound cavernous by any stretch. So you don't excite the room so much that it washes back over you. It's designed to give that medium size room sound that's used on a lot of those records. I think a lot of it has to do with, with the wood in here. There's a lot of wood, and wood is reflective and absorbent. It does sound really good. Uh, I'm going to record a little bit of it. All right, and then we'll move on to some other ones. Stand by. I just got such a great feeling about this place. It's about the people, too. Mark is one of the best in the business. He knows exactly what he's doing. It's a little too much like the other drum, and I'm wondering if we can tune it up and still yeah. make it have it sound good. Yes, yes. Not only being able to get a sound quickly, but to be able to take somebody's input or feedback and instantly know what to do to give them what they're asking for. Mark's great at that. All right, shall we start hitting the cymbals? So we're just trying to extract his knowledge and put it into a product. It won't sound the same if you do it electronically. No, if no, no. If you do it with your hand, it yes. I moved to Austin, Texas back in 1980. Uh, I came from uh, recording in large studios, uh, which is a whole different approach than what I found when I got here. The drums played more of a supportive role behind the story, behind the music, not as large. So when the idea of uh, putting together an Americana kit came together, it, was, it really appealed to me because I, I, I thought about it and I thought, yeah, I definitely changed my approach in miking drums and towards what kind of room sounds I use when I got more involved with this style of music. Can I get a little more angle on that puppy? Each component of the drum kit has its own microphones. We'll start with a kick drum. is an Audix D6 microphone. It's called a large diaphragm dynamic mic, so it has really good low-end response. Over here on the snare drum, the top mic is the industry standard Shure SM57, and the bottom is a Sennheiser 421. That mic is pointing up at the snares, so we're able to give the user ultimately more control if, if they want to have more of the snares rattling, they can. On the hi-hat, this is an Octava MC012. It's a small diaphragm condenser mic. And it's hypercardioid, so it's very focused on just the hi-hat. So we're trying to minimize bleed from other elements of the drum kits. What do you think of this hi-hat? The overheads are Audio-Technica 4033s, which are also condenser mics. They're larger diaphragms, so we're getting a nice stereo spread of, of all the cymbals. Pick up a nice broad picture of the drum kit. 
Tom mics are Sennheiser 421s. The ubiquitous use for that microphone is on Toms, and they sound great. Last but not least, we're capturing the whole drum kit with some room mics. These are also the Octava MC012s, and this is what's called an ORTF configuration. It's a stereo miking, so it's picking up again the whole drum kit. Kind of like the overheads, but just, you know, it's from the front of the kit sounds different. Drum samples a long time ago when they first came out, it was an individual drum that was alone in a space and very dead and really sounded fake. Here, you're getting all the resonance of the room, but you're also getting all the resonance of the instrument itself. So when you hit the snare drum, you're also getting residual ring through the toms, the cymbals, you know, everything happening all at once as though you're playing together. We're just capturing what's here in the room. A lot more of it is in, in the choice of the drums and the cymbals. Is that okay with you guys? Absolutely. We'll use the sizzle on the ride. Yeah, that just, that just added a day to your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> My drum kits are tuned up and specifically designed for use in that kind of music. It's not super rock sounding, but it has a lot of life, a lot of snap at the top end and a lot of tone that follows it. I think the idea is to use a wood drum. Right. And uh, I think more we just try this, we get the toms and the kick where we want it, yeah. and then we start, then we, we augment with the right snare yeah, for yeah, the kit, that right? Yeah, fits with that. So, so we, we have get a, a, a good kit together for Yeah, me. absolutely. We decide on what drums we're going to use, and then it's basically hitting drums. You need to have a real drummer to hit the drum because he knows how to do it. You gotta be just as good a drummer to play one hit at a time. A lot of people think of a drum as just a diode, like an on-off switch. You either hit it or you don't. It's really not the case. There's a lot of articulation and variety of tones that you can get out of a drum or out of a cymbal. You can push the air through the drum, try and really get the bottom head moving. And with that, you're kind of throwing your force through. Or you could try and coax the sound out of the top head by pulling stuff out. See how that's a much longer tone, tighter tone. When we're making this library, we're not playing music at that moment. But hopefully we're getting sounds together so that when you're at home on your computer and you're working on your songs, that it sounds like something that inspires you to make music of your own. The drummer is going to be more responsible for tuning the drums and all the minutia of head choice and sticks and all those kind of things that he can change that my job is to capture it. In this project, me and Stefan, our job is mainly to supervise. When I'm in the control room, what I'm listening for among several things, you know, I want to make sure we're not getting clipping, that our signal strength is right, or does that snare drum have too much ring now, or maybe do we need to move the microphone somewhere else? We've really just spent a lot of time to make sure that those are all captured well. We're really serious about what we do and we let it take the time that it's needed and try to think of every little detail to make it as real as possible. Whenever you're ready. It's kind of a loop between the drummer and the engineer and the producer. Just We're all a team and we're trying to just make sure that we're getting consistent results. We're thinking about making them right for our product. Mostly Mark is thinking about making it representable for Austin and for Americana and for what he's doing. I didn't know that they were going to get into such detail. I was very happy to see it. As a drummer and as a user of programs like that, I was very glad to see how detailed they got into each, each drum and each cymbal. I can attest to how much attention we are paying to every subtle nuance of every drum or the hi-hat or the cymbals, just really thinking, well, how could you play that? Is that something that the user would want to use if it's a particular way a drum is hit? and capturing several versions of that at many different velocity levels. It's a lot of drum hits. The drummer has to hit a drum and wait for everything to ring out and reach complete silence and then hit the drum again. And it takes a lot of time to do it. I don't envy these guys. Sadly, uh, although I thought I hit the chord, uh, it's not there. The second time, could we? Yeah, man. A lot of care goes into putting this stuff together. They don't cut any corners, and at the end of the day, it sounds really great. Yeah, that sounds good. We've been sitting in the control room listening to the individual drum hits now for a week, and we've said it many times, oh, I can't wait to hear this play. 
I really enjoyed working with uh, the Tune Track people. They've got a clear concept of what they're doing. They took every drum that you could possibly want to use in this music. They had a great understanding of Americana music when they came in. It was very easy to come up with something that's going to create a great kit. I really think that we got exactly what we wanted from Mark and the other guys. This is some of the best work I've done and uh, we're, we're thrilled with the sounds we're getting. Hopefully all the work that we were doing this week is transparent to the end user and they just have great sounding drums that they can go make music with. I'm really glad take, part of takes us home to Sweden because that's what we wanted. It was definitely worth it coming here. They've gone to some of the great studios in the world and they've included the Congress House, so I'm very honored. I'm very proud of the sounds we got. And as a user, as someone who works in composing music and producing music, I'm really excited to get my hands on the product, to be honest with you. It could be very useful. What you have is a drummer in a studio. You have the room. It's all yours. Let's go check yeah. those out.